Welcome to Caravan Adventures, a channel where we journey across different locations in the UK from where we get outside, visit the local area, explore the landscape and experience the great outdoors. From where we capture our trips, travels and adventures through the medium of film, drone footage and photography. I'm Andrew, here's Vicky. Here's the van. And last but not least, introducing our boys, Ralph and Oscar. This week we've arrived in the historic medieval market town of Tewkesbury in Gloucestershire, staying at the Tewkesbury Abbey motorhome and caravan site from where our adventures begin. So a very good morning and a very misty morning as I start today's adventure through the historic streets and alleyways of Tewkesbury. So we're walking up Church Street, turning into Old Baptist Chapel Court and hidden down one of Tewkesbury's famous alleyways is this special historical place, home to the Old Baptist Chapel, its court and burial ground, which was an important religious place for the Baptist community of the past. With its beautiful cottages, one can only imagine the life back in the day. So the old Baptist chapel and burial ground was originally a domestic dwelling built around 1458. And from the mid 17th century onwards, members of the persecuted early Baptist movement began to use it for secret and illegal religious meetings. So we're heading out of the Old Baptist Chapel Court, back onto Church Street, turning right towards the bell, walking down the very quaint Mill Street towards the Abbey Mill down there at the bottom. Beautiful period medieval picturesque cottages. So here we are down at the mill, crossing Mill Avon to the other side, to the gorgeous Seven Ham. It's been a mill here since 1190, when the monks of the nearby Tewkesbury Abbey had a channel dug from the River Avon to power the mill to grind grain. The channel is known as Mill Avon and extends from the Avon to the Seven at the southern edge of Tewkesbury. The 12th century mill was rebuilt in 1793 with four wheels and remained in operation until 1920. More recently, it's housed a cafe together with shops selling antiques and souvenirs. And most recently, it's undergone conversion to apartments with its handsome collection of hipped and gabled roofs, mottled brick walls and weatherboard extensions. Leaving the mill behind, the mist has lifted and the sunshine's come out. We 
we're taking a stroll alongside the Severn Ham. Ham is a, an old Saxon word for bend in the river, flood plain or water meadow. And the Severn Ham is a place of special scientific interest, full of wildlife, birds and insects. The Ham is most famous for horse racing and has a long history in Gloucestershire. And annual races were held here since the early 1700s, the earliest record of the ham being used for horse racing is from 1721, long before the first ever event at Cheltenham in 1815. So with the beautiful sound of the bells tolling at the Abbey, we're heading back across the water into town now for a little explore around the buildings, alleys and passageways. So the first half of this alley is one of the oldest and prettiest alleys in the town, named for Mary Lilly who kept a china shop here. It once housed a clay smoking pipe manufacturers and the pipes were made in moulds and then hung on the alley walls to dry. One cottage is now named Clay Pipes after the trade. So this is one of a group of alleys running from Barton Street to Swillgate and like many alleys in Tewkesbury they have a curve line said to act as a brake to stop the winds tunnelling up the alley named after the Compton family who ran a furniture shop in the front house. And then as we reach the bottom of Compton's Alley, we come back onto Swirlgate Road, turn left, and uh, we find ourselves in Fletcher Alley. In 1924, Mrs. Sarah Ann Fletcher died in the workhouse. She was 102 years old and blind. She was the widow of Richard Fletcher, gunsmith and bell hanger. They were a dynasty of Fletcher gunsmiths who had two shops in Tewkesbury, as well as gunsmiths in Worcester and Gloucester. Coming out onto Barton Street, taking a right before we reach Hughes Alley with this lovely mural. It's pretty uninspiring down here, I must admit. Especially when we get to this pile of rubble where they've knocked some cottages down. And at the end of Hughes Alley, we're back on Swirlgate, turning left into Fish Alley. Where well, lots of the old cottages have been demolished. Walking our way back up to the top. More demolition here as some of the old cottages have been knocked down. This is a bit more pretty. Cottage and heading back onto Barton High Street. So here we are in Turner's Court, and like many alleys, the name comes from a past occupant of the front house, in this case, Mr. Turner, a stocking knitter. And in common with the rest of Tewkesbury, drowning was an ever present danger and Turner's Court seems to have had more than its share of tragedy. In 1902, the four-year-old James Green drowned in the Swillgate when his grandmother sent him home unoccupied from her house in Parker's Court, Barton Street, back to Turner's Court. He strayed down to the Swillgate, fell in and drowned. So whilst walking the streets of Tewkesbury and enjoying the historical buildings, the passageways and alleys, it pays to look up and here you can see a tiny window in the top of this medieval building which overlooks the cross in the town centre. And we've spoken to a local 
she reliably informed me that this window was used to peruse and view the stonings that were taking place at the cross and as you can see it's a great vantage point to witness such persecution and indeed etched into the wall at the side of the window are many of the names of the victims that suffered at the hand of the populace. And here we have the Abbey Lawn Cottages dating from 1410, originally constructed with a shop facing the street with the living accommodation behind. These were rented to merchants and their families with wooden shutters that opened onto the street from which goods were sold. Walking down Mill Street we have these beautiful quaint picturesque cottages bathed in the late afternoon light heading down towards Abbey Mill and Mill Avon as we approach sunset. These are just beautiful. Had a quick check on right move and one of these, I'm not sure which one, but one of them's for sale at 250,000 pounds. Beautiful spot. Look at that. Right in the shadow of the Abbey. and right alongside Mill Avon. And then walking round the corner, have these beautiful cottages as well, overlooking the water, bathed in the late afternoon sun. Just stunning, glorious, beautiful. Here we are in the beautiful walled Victorian gardens down by Mill Avon with a beautiful willow tree. Pleasure Gardens were built to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria in 1897. So I'm leaving the Victoria Gardens now and heading back to the van after a good walk through the town, looking at the historical buildings, visiting the passageways and walking the alleys of old medieval Tewkesbury. I hope you've enjoyed the short insight into the historic town and if you're looking for more information on the passageways and alleys there's a great little app called Alley Cats which gives much detail and history and insight into the alleys and passageways. So like I said heading back to the van now to get some food and uh, see what tomorrow has in store for more adventures. So I'll see you then. Don't look back, don't forget, you gotta let know all you can. Don't look back, don't forget, you gotta let know all you can. Don't you wait, don't you wait.